Okay, good evening and welcome to the Board of Select meeting of January 26 at uh, 6.30 p.m. we'll make it. I'll lead off uh, first uh, checking the, um, the people on screen here. As chairman, I determined that there is no quorum for this Board of Selectmen meeting tonight. I therefore declare that this meeting is no longer a formal meeting, but is now an informational session to provide the public with very important updates and information. So uh, we're operating with just one selectman and that's the reason uh, tonight that it will not be a formal session, but an informational session for the public. I would help, I would request that all in the audience stay in attendance because uh, coming up shortly is very, could be life-saving uh, information as we uh, announce the arrival of vaccines for COVID coming to town. Thank you. All right, one more statement here, and then we'll go forward with a public input. To all citizens of Wenham, as you are aware, the town has been facing numerous challenges over the past few months with respect to matters involving a member of the select board. These challenges have encompassed numerous open meeting law complaints, public record requests, employment related matters, and additional legal issues. We understood based upon last week's meeting that Selectman Clemency was going to submit his resignation to the town clerk. That has not occurred yet. And the chair has posted a meeting for this Thursday at 3.30 PM with a proposed executive session to try and bring resolution to some of these matters in the ongoing uh, litigation and so forth. There are many things on the agenda tonight that I will be discussing as to when and how the town will move forward to begin a new chapter. I appreciate, I appreciate that sometimes it feels like the wheels of government are going pretty slow here, but I think uh, they do on occasion, but uh, it allows us time to be thoughtful and deliberate in these uh, quite unusual circumstances and we we'll keep everything in the public forum. For these reasons, the chair is grateful for your patience and ask you to support the path to Wenham's next chapter. Thank you. All right, so uh, public input is next up on the, uh, the uh, now um, informational session agenda, we'll put it. And uh, as a reminder, the public input will be from a total of 10 minutes. Each Wenham resident will be allowed two minutes, which will allow for five total residents to speak. At the discretion of the chairman, time may be set aside on the meeting agenda for a public comment period. After being recognized by the chairman, the speaker will identify themselves by name, street address, and the proposed subject upon which they wish to speak. Attendees can use their allocated time to speak on a matter affecting the town or matters under the purview of the town government, not questions directed to an individual selectman or the board as a whole. The public comment period cannot be used to endorse candidates for office, to endorse ballot questions, or to discuss topics on a ballot question. The Board of Selectmen will not deliberate or vote on matters brought up during the public comment period. The chairman may decide to add the matter to a future meeting agenda, however. So uh, Jackie, thank you for very much for running the meeting this evening. And uh, do we have anybody in the chat room with their hands up that wishes to speak tonight? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, so far we have Patrick Waddell. Um, and if there's anyone else too, if you wanna just remember to type your name in the chat and I'll let the chairman know when I see names. But so far, Mr. Chairman, we have Patrick Waddell. Okay, so let's uh, let Patrick Waddell in for his uh, two minutes and uh, let's proceed. Patrick, you on? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, I just want to say that this is a time to heal. We've been through a lot and it's John resign, you know, it's time. It's well past time. It's time for, for Wenham to move on. Second, um, your, the statement you just read about public comment is in violation of the first amendment. You can, this is political speech and it is not to be abridged by the, the um, elected body. So I would suggest you amend to not limit to items that are not on the agenda. You, you can't limit the speech and it can't be five people. You have allotted 10 minutes. So when those 10 minutes are over, public comment is over. Not five people making one sentence comments. Mm -hmm. um, and last, I would respectfully ask that I be allowed to address the OML issues 
when they come up on the agenda, as I have filed six open meeting law complaints against the Board of Selectmen. So I would like to address those with you at this meeting, please. All right. So thank you, Mr. Waddell. Uh, is there anybody else who'd like to uh, speak, uh, Jackie? Um, at this time, there's no one else putting their name in the chat as to indicate that they would wish to do public input. All right, then we'll uh, close the uh, public input session and I'll turn it over to uh, Tom Younger for our uh, announcements. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one of the, we have a number of announcements this evening, but first I'd like to speak to one announcement is that tomorrow evening at six o'clock, um, the Airport Commission, Beverly Airport Commission, will be discussing uh, the master plan that they have going forward. And it will begin the meeting at six o'clock. Uh, and you can reach it at wenhamma.gov for details or else on beverlyairport.com. Uh, to give a little perspective of what the master plan is going to include, uh, if we could go back, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, one of the main aspects is they have a plan to lengthen the main runway uh, by 600 feet. And part of the reason is including to increase their payload carrying capability, which would be increasing their fuel and passengers as part of the entire $20 million upgrade. Uh, according to FAA regulations, uh, they need to lengthen the airport to uh, have greater fuel capacity and increase the number of passengers. I haven't dealt with an air uh, in airports since I was on Martha's Vineyard as their Oak Bluffs manager back in the early 80s. So I'm going to have to be brought up to a little speed on um, airport um, management. But uh, they're not expanding their 470-acre footprint. Uh, the runway construction, if approved, would begin in 2024. Other changes in the master plan is to narrow the secondary runway, uh, realign their taxiways and their vehicle service road, and upgrade their lighting to LEDs. Uh, my intention tomorrow is I've got dueling meetings tomorrow night, so I'm going to try to attend the Zoom meeting for the master plan for a while before I uh, go into the meeting for our finance committee that evening regarding our budget and such. Uh, next item on the agenda there is an, another announcement again that we did last week uh, was for the affordable unit availability of 83 Dodges Road. Uh, it's important that if you're interested in uh, going through the lottery uh, application process, that you really need to attend uh, Thursday on February 4th at 6 p.m. on Zoom, the public information session. That will give you all the information that you need regarding what you need to do with the lottery application packets uh, for this two bedroom single family uh, affordable unit. It will be a lottery and your eligibility, you need to be a first time home buyer. And the maximum sales price would be 272,100. Lottery is going to be conducted on March 15th via Zoom, but please, if you're interested, this is a great chance to uh, buy a piece of Wenham and join our community. Uh, so please attend the February 4th information session. Next, for our annual town election, uh, nomination papers are available January 29th, uh, and they're for all seat all seats have to be, the nomination papers have to be picked up in the town clerk's office at a town hall by appointment only because of COVID. And they're due back on March 18th, 2021 with at least 21 signatures. Always recommend you get more than 21 signatures because uh, if one or two gets thrown out, that can be problematic if you only have the minimum. So please uh, get as many as you think you can get so they can be approved by the town clerk's office. Uh, nomination papers for the school committee seats has to be picked up at the district administration office and due back there March, 28, March 18th on Thursday with at least 40 signatures. Same thing, recommend get more than 40 signatures to be safe uh, for qualification. 
Last date of withdrawal from the annual town election ballot would be Monday, April 5th uh, of this year. And that is so your name doesn't show up. Even if you don't with if you don't withdraw by April 5th, it will be on the ballot. Uh, any other questions, call the town clerk's office at 978-468-5520, extension one, or go to our website uh, for further information. Now, here's the seats open for annual town election. Uh, I'd love to see as many people <clears throat> run. It's a democracy in action. So for, uh, whoops, we just passed. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. Yes, I am interested in people running for elections. So let's see what we have. Uh, Board of Assessors, uh, one seat, uh, three-year term. Board of Health, and particularly during this time, is very important to our community. Uh, one person, three-year term. Uh, for the regular seat uh, on our select board, you have the one position open for the three-year term. Uh, the Wenham Library Trustees, uh, two positions at large, three-year terms. Uh, the school committee, the regional school committee, two positions, three-year terms. Uh, the moderator, one position, three-year terms. Planning board helped uh, design the future of our community, one position, five-year terms. Water Commission, one position, three-year ter terms. And for our housing authority, we have two open positions, one a five-year term and one a three-year term. Next, town census forms. You only have a few days left, uh, and that will be on January 31st uh, to submit them. Uh, all residents should be included on the census forms and animals as requested. I've already sent my forms in at my town and uh, our dog Minnie is included on the, uh, on the census. Uh, the forms may be left, whoops, I'm not done yet. Got a little more there, thank you, Nikki. Uh, thank you. Signed forms need to be left at the town hall drop box and mail the town clerk's office. You may also submit them by email. Thank you. Speaking of dogs, uh, dog registration forms are due also by January 31st. So um, those who have them and know what to do regarding it, it's very important that you file that uh, with the town clerk and uh, $10 per dog, 15 if not neutered, late fee of $25 is assessed if the dog's not registered by February 1st. And trust me, uh, we do utilize the late fee. So please get them in at the um, regular time on January 31st. Uh, the information was sent to you with your annual census at the end of December. If for some reason you don't have that, you may have trashed it by mistake, please contact um, Town Hall for uh, registering your, your dog. It's very important. And yes, speaking of importance, we have the cutest dog in Wenham contest. Uh, I wish we had this in my community. Uh, this is the fourth annual. And you email your current photo of your dog uh, to the town clerk's office. You have to be licensed in January 2021. So if you don't have a license, you will be disqualified. Uh, entries must be received by Friday, January 29th at one o'clock. Photos will be displayed on the website. It's a great reason to go on our website to watch the dogs. And virtual voting is gonna be open February 8th to February 15th. Uh, the winner will be announced at a future uh, board meeting and they will receive a gift, ba gift basket of dog goodies, please. Um, submit your dog's uh, photo. They will really appreciate the basket if they win. Uh, next, again, we are no noting our volunteer boards and committees in our openings. Uh, we still have an opening for one member on the Con Conservation Commission, or one member on the Council on Aging, two openings on the Hamilton Wenham Community Access and Media Board, two openings on a Hamilton Wedham Cultural Council, one opening on the Iron Rail Commission, two on Open Space and Recreation Committee, and three associate members on Zoning Board of Appeals. Please uh, volunteer for these committees and help Wedham make a difference. And some further reports I have, we go straight into that. Uh, just to show you a little bit of what I'm doing, um, I'm gonna be putting up my public meeting schedule of meetings that I'll be going through uh, weekly when I um, meet with the board, the board. 
Uh, tomorrow, I have two public meetings I'll be attending via Zoom. Uh, the regional airport meeting at six o'clock, and then uh, I'll be spending most of my time at the 1M Finance Committee meeting right afterwards. Uh, Thursday uh, in the afternoon, um, we have a 1M Water Commission meeting. That's tentative because I may have a, another meeting coming up simultaneously. So I'll have to uh, juggle that one around. And very important, uh, I believe it's at five o'clock, uh, one on Board of Health meeting I'll be attending. But I just want to have the uh, town's residents know uh, what meetings are out there and what I'll be attending. Next, we haven't done, I haven't done one of these in uh, Wenham yet. But chapter 90 allocations, it's very important. That's state money that comes into each city and town that goes toward their road projects, their town road projects. Uh, bringing this up now, because the governor had just filed a $200 uh, million dollar bill, his annual bill. Uh, Nikki, can we go to the next slide, please? That one, thank you. Uh, the bill should be approved by the legislature in the spring. Annually, Wenham's been receiving between about 151,000 and 154,000 uh, annually since uh, fiscal year 12. And the funding is amount is determined by a formula which includes road mileage, population and employment. Uh, in our particular case, well in all the communities, 50% of the funding formula is based on your road mileage, 21% on your population and 21% on how many people are actually employed in your community. Over the years, uh, with my, I've been advocating with the Mass Municipal Association to at least increase the annual amount to 300 million, and that has not occurred. A study was done by Mass Municipal Association back in 2018 that the Commonwealth actually needs $685 million annually in chapter nine allocations to be distributed uh, to cities and towns. The formula was created in 1972, but generally has not seen any changes in the structure. So literally it's pretty much based on road mileage, but does include population and employment. Uh, Jackie, can we go back? Nikki, can we go back to the previous one? So I charted for a uh, town just to take a look at what we get for chapter 90 and what, oops, what we other communities are getting in our area. Their record shows us with 27 and a half road miles with a population of about a little under 4,900 and employment in our community of 12, 1,211. That equates to about a little more than $152,500. When we look at other communities in our area, uh, the ones who receive the most obviously is Beverly uh, with over a million dollars that they get. But based, if you look at their employment population and road mileage numbers, they're very high. Danvers is second, and that's also very high in, uh, in employment and population. Those two are generally a lot of the drivers for those two communities, and they get almost 900,000. If you look further down to our smaller communities, uh, Hamilton, about 45 miles, uh, 70, about 7,800 population, and they get approximately about 242,000. Uh, Manchester and Essex are about the 130 to 140 range. Topsfield gets a little more based on, uh, they do have a fair amount of miles in that community, almost 50, and that drives them to about a $260,000 allocation. Uh, if the chapter 90 allocation of $200 million doesn't change over the years, our amounts pretty much will stay the same. So as we said earlier, we haven't really <laughs> seen any kind of bump since uh, 19, I'm sorry, 2012. And so it's going to have to see a larger push by uh, the Commonwealth. We do in our budget all last year put in 85,000 separately uh, from our chapter 90 allocation. But generally, that means that uh, our town literally is spending uh, 200 and, um, we're about $240,000 uh, in roadway money. And I can pretty much guarantee you that our public works director is going, will say, and I agree, that that's not enough money to maintain our roads in a uh, 
fair fashion. And I think most communities say the same thing. I don't know if there's any questions, uh, Mr. Chairman, or just. No, I think, uh, you know, that speaks uh, quite well that we are probably behind on road maintenance and uh, reconstruction. And we'll, I know the FinCom is uh, taking a look at what budget allocations we should put into uh, FY22 and beyond to perhaps catch up a little bit on uh, road works. Right. Right. Also, I'm sorry, one more yes. report. I don't have a slide for this, but uh, tomorrow the governor should be filing uh, his budget for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, it's the beginning of the state process for the budget. Why that is important to us is included in tomorrow's budget will be the governor's share of local aid for the 351 cities and towns. Uh, we will be reviewing that and I hope to make a presentation on what he files on it at our next meeting. But uh, there was an announcement last week by the Lieutenant Governor that on the average, they are filing a 3.5% increase in unrestricted general government aid uh, for all cities and towns. Doesn't mean that we're getting 3.5%, we could get less, it could be more, but on the average. But just passing on is that if, it is a 3.5% average. Uh, last year, we received approximately $454,000 in ge unrestricted general government aid. If you add 3.5%, it brings us just a little less than $471,000. $17,000, not gonna turn it down, but it's uh, something that we would still like to see a higher increase in that. Uh, the House and the Senate will be passing and reviewing their budget in the upcoming months. Uh, Senate should be completed with theirs in generally in May, and that's after our town meeting. Uh, House should be pretty much, I hope, finished with theirs in April. We're going to be conservative in our local aid numbers until we basically see further down the road, maybe with the House votes uh, on that. Uh, also, what we're looking to see is what uh, general um, chapter 70 for our district school numbers were last year, we received about mm, 3.7, we'll have 3.75 million. Uh, and will be interesting tomorrow if the filing what that number will be also and how that fits into our budgets. And I think I'm done there, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Tom. So, uh... Very nice uh, update on that. And we look forward, the whole community, and I know the Finance Committee is working on the uh, what we expect to get from a state aid. And uh, I'm sure the schools are looking at that as well, very closely. All right, so uh, next on the agenda is the uh, Chairman's Report. And tonight I'd like to utilize that uh, time to uh, chart a path forward as uh, we're currently in a, a very unusual situation. The town very shortly will have a solitary member on the Board of Selectmen. Let me assure everybody that the town government activities are and continue to operate as usual. When you think about it, the Board of Selectmen traditionally meet for just an hour or so every other week, and 99.9% .9 of the uh, town's activities continue on throughout. So although we're, we're down to one, all the regular activities of the town, all your services will continue as planned and as routine. The routine activities of the Board of Selectmen not requiring a quorum will continue as usual, and there will be a weekly Board of Selectmen informational session as tonight at every Tuesday at 6.30 going forward. The sessions will provide the public with up-to-date information and will continue to include presentations from our various departments as we approach town meeting and as we've conducted in the last few weeks. Ongoing discussions with the town council and town administrator have helped and verified a path forward. The annual town meeting will stay as scheduled on the 1st of May. Depending upon the status of COVID related restrictions and precautions at that time, we will determine closer to the date and the place and time to be set. Also, we are one step closer to town meeting tonight as I announced that Mr. Anthony Fahari has once again volunteered to be moderator for the May 1st meeting. We uh, certainly send him his thanks to repeatedly now stepped in to be the interim 
moderator. I now invite uh, Jim Purdy, chairman of the finance committee to give us a quick update on the progress of the FY22 budget going forward. Jim, are you on? I am Gary, thank you very much. Uh, just a brief update for the community. Um, just, we have uh, been meeting routinely since uh, October. Uh, we had a major uh, meeting with all the department heads on a Saturday, uh, on January 9th to review the initial budget requests, the operations and the capital requests. Uh, subsequent to then, we have been um, <clears throat> meeting uh, routinely to review those requests. FinCom this year has a uh, liaison to each department. The liaisons will be meeting with uh, their department uh, head uh, assignments over the next uh, several weeks. Uh, in addition to that, uh, FinCom has been meeting and discussing uh, mutual shared services with Hamilton, the Hamilton Finance Committee. Uh, that includes the library, inspectional services, and joint recreation. And in fact, tomorrow evening, we have a joint uh, FinCom meeting between Hamilton and, and, uh, and Wenham to discuss those budgets and, and, capital, uh, and capital improvement requests. We are meeting uh, as well, uh, coming up with the school, school uh, superintendent and the school committee representation. Uh, we're gonna meet with the school folks on um, February 1st for an afternoon meeting, and then on February 10th uh, for a meeting with both boards of selectmen, uh, finance committee and the school committees. Uh, we're looking at a budget this year that we hope to not use free cash for operations. Uh, in the past several years, we've uh, dipped into our free cash uh, to fund uh, operations of town, of town government. Uh, we'd like to uh, review some of our, our capital requests that we've had in the past and how we can best fund them. Uh, we have revolving capital requests that go from year to year. But in that, but in that discussion, we also developed a, uh, a, a new uh, sub, subcommittee of the Finance Committee of a long range plan, uh, capital planning. And we'll be incorporating uh, long range uh, requests from our department heads and try to put forward a, uh, a capital plan that looks forward to, for the next five to 10 years. Uh, Jackie Brezhnehan, the Director of Administrative Services has been working on this historically. Uh, but what, we're, we'll, what we're gonna work towards is a, is a longer range plan, looking at facilities, looking at coordination with Hamilton to see if there's any opportunities uh, for coordinated capital uh, purchases or capital, uh, uh, capital improvements between the two communities that we could uh, possibly do, do together. Um, so we'll be meeting uh, almost weekly between now and uh, right through April, uh, working on preparing the financial warrant articles uh, that the folks will see. Uh, and we'll have our routine uh, warrant hearing, our financial warrant hearing uh, in the month of uh, April, uh, most likely uh, two to three weeks before uh, town meeting. So everyone has a chance to uh, uh, to review how uh, your, your uh, town finances are operating and what we're spending our money on. So briefly, that's, uh, that's where we are. Um, we have a uh, active committee and everyone's kind of pitching in and uh, working hard to, to reach our goals for this year. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Jim. And uh, for the public, I hope you will join the uh, ongoing FinCom meetings to uh, get up to speed on uh, what the budget's really going to entail next year. But uh, from what I've seen the, uh, at the start here, we're in better shape to, uh, at the start of this process than we were last year. And that uh, the fact that we won't hopefully dip into free cash is uh, quite an achievement for the uh, FinCom and the, all the department heads that have worked so hard to be a, a very uh, effective and efficient operation. All right. So moving forward, as we've uh, already talked about the uh, town meeting and the moderator, and uh, next uh, I'll say that the town meeting warrant and the articles for town meeting and the schedule for the steps to complete the warrant will remain as usual. 
Our great team at Town Hall already has started the process to build the documents as we address FY22 at town meeting. So one more uh, step uh, underway to uh, keep things uh, moving along. Next item, which I think is probably of uh, quite a bit of interest from the public is uh, how do we repopulate the, uh, the uh, Board of Selectmen and uh, going forward. The town is moving forward to an annual town meeting on the 1st of May and an annual election on the 6th of May. Those will stay as scheduled. Right now, there is a vacancy on the Board of Selectmen with a term to, term to an annual election in April of 2022. There is one vacancy on the board with a term to 6th May this year with Mr. Clemenzi's resignation. As confirmed by town council in this situation, the sole remaining selectman can call a special election. Things that uh, in coordination with the uh, town council and the town administrator that we have considered and the town clerk. A special election requires a period of 64 days to conduct. As confirmed with our town clerk the 8th of April on a Thursday as usual will be a good date for a special election. It will get elected officials in place with a few weeks before the annual town meeting. Concerning the position with a term through April 2022 on the Board of Selectmen, the plan is to call a special election for that seat. It is desirable to establish a quorum on the Board of Selectmen prior to the annual town meeting so that there will be a Board of Selectmen recommendations on the warrant articles as we usually have. It is also desirable to have a quorum of Board of Selectmen prior to the town meeting to address matters that could come up during or just before that town meeting. In general, it's also desirable to have the second Selectmen in place as soon as possible, considering the risk of COVID, quarantine, or other circumstances for a solitary current selectman. Concerning the other vacant seat with a term that expires on 6th of May this year, the plan is to fill that seat at the regular annual town meeting at, excuse me, at the annual town election on 6th of May. It will not be a part of the special election. I don't think it's beneficial to have an individual in office for less than one month that would be from 8th of April to the 6th of May to fill out the rest of the ter current term there. It's also not on the special election so as not to complicate the public understanding of the elections as the position, if we were to vote for it twice, would be both on a special and the annual election for the one seat and would be overlapping uh, campaigns, if you would. It would be possible, it would be possible to tack the remaining 30 days to the full year term, which would be running three years, but that would take special legislative initiative. And by the time we got that done, the special election would be po pushed back almost to election day. The town clerk informs me that the cost of a typical special election will be approximately $1,700. Given the current unusual circumstances, it is better to keep things as simple and normal as possible and proceed expeditiously to repopulate the Board of Selectmen to the point that we have a quorum. So I'll just go over that because I know it's fairly complicated, but the plan is to conduct a special election on the 8th of April to fill the one Board of Selectmen position that runs until May of 22, giving that individual about 13 months in office. We will let the other vacant position expire unfilled through 6th May annual election and have that contested just the one time at that annual election for the full three-year term. So any questions on that, you know, tomorrow, give us an email call at uh, the town hall or uh, at the town clerk's office. All right, so continuing with the elections, the next subject on special elections is the position of town clerk. Our wonderful town clerk, Diane Bucco has resigned effective three February and we wish her well as she continues in her municipal career. The town clerk will appoint an assistant town clerk before her departure with advertisements to recruit an experienced clerk to that position already in place. The assistant will be in place from as soon as possible until after the annual town election. That clerk we will hire will have professional experience and will be able to handle all the run up and preparations for town meeting and the annual election. The special election will be called in accordance with state law by a solitary selectman as soon as the written resignation of Mr. Clemency is received. This will 
allow a town clerk to be elected at the special election on the 8th of April, the imposition for three or four weeks before the annual election, and will all the period of time have the backup of a professional assistant town clerk in place already. Given the turbulence around the national elections, we want to ensure that this uh, both special and annual elections come off without a hitch and that our immaculate record of elections in Wenham stays the same. So I know that's a fairly complicated, but in summary, it's two people on the special election, the uh, selectman to uh, spring of 22 and the town clerk, the other selectman's position and all the other offices that uh, Tom listed earlier in the meeting will be on the annual election on the 6th of May. All right, so that uh, hopefully covers the elections. I'm sure there's questions coming back and we'll handle them uh, as your emails come in. Last thing on the uh, road to uh, town uh, meeting that uh, I've been, been in consultations with the uh, town council and we've determined that in some circumstances going forward that may be uh, foreseen or unforeseen and may be desirable or necessary to obtain special certain authority for a solitary selectman to uh, take certain actions. That possibility has been underway already and we've uh, been in contact with both our state representative and state senator and would be under the guidance of the town council to proceed with that request if uh, need be. But uh, overall summary then, I think the uh, path to the annual town meeting and to the annual election and the special election is uh, very well in place. We have a great staff in the uh, town hall that will get us there. And uh, let me assure everybody in the public, that although we have just this one solitary selectman going forward, that all the routine and necessary business of the town will continue, especially with the help of FinCom and all the other committees and volunteers in town. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, as part of our weekly uh, series leading up to a town meeting, I'd like to call uh, Margaret Hoffman from our land use and committee uh, coordinator. And I think uh, tonight she has uh, several slides that will cover uh, five different uh, areas that she is uh, working on. So Margaret, are you up and ready? Yes, I am. Thank you. All right. It's all yours. Thank you. Um, I'll be brief. I know there's some more interesting things coming up after me. Um, I just want to let you know um, that you probably already do know the land use department handles the planning board, the zoning board of appeals, conservation commission, the affordable housing trust and the open space and recreation committee. This department staffs, staffs those five boards and committees. We attend their meetings. Um, and currently there's just me in the department. Um, we were a two member department up until December when Missy Berry left, um, each of us shared the responsibilities of these boards uh, and in part-time positions. Currently I am filling in until we do find someone to replace Missy. Um, yeah, thank you, Nikki. So currently there are some items that I am involved in that don't pertain to particular boards or committees. Um, the Beverly Airport Master Plan Committee I, I am on that committee. They ask for representatives from each of the surrounding towns to sit in on the meetings and give feedback when necessary. We started those meetings back um, in, I think, February before COVID hit, and then they kind of fell by the wayside for a while. They've recently come back, and as, um, as Tom had mentioned, there is a meeting tomorrow night, and that is just for the town of Wenham. They're having different public sessions for each community in the area. Um, it's an opportunity for the residents to give some feedback on and give some ideas. There'll be a presentation by the airport committee to talk about their master plan. And then they'll ask for feedback from residents. So if anybody in town can't attend that or needs information or wants to contact me, I can always get your information to the, um, the airport planning committee. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention that we're kind of monitoring is the uh, the recent economic stimulus bill legislation that was signed by Governor Baker. Baker, Baker. Um, he this it sounds like it, parts of this will impact Wenham. Um, the MBTA MBTA communities are going to be required to create a zone where multifamily housing is allowed by right. 
We don't have that in Wenham now. Um, the planning board will be responsible for updating the zoning bylaws to accommodate these regulations. But right now we're still waiting for some direction from town council on this. And I think Lauren Goldberg's probably on tonight. I had reached out to Lauren to see if KP Law is aware of this. And of course they are, and they're working on it and will let us know what we need to do. If it happens that we have to update our zoning bylaws for this town at this town meeting, we will, um, you know, we'll certainly have public meetings to let everyone know what's happening there. Um, well, also we, pro in this office, we process building permits that come in to um, the permitting office just to make sure they're adhering to zoning and conservation requirements. And we get lots of calls from the public about land use issues. So we're doing that all the time. So as far as each board goes, uh, the planning board uh, has, well, this office has received two grants. One is the MAPC Accelerating Climate Resiliency Grant. And the other one was the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs Planning Assistant Grant. These grants are both to be used to update our regulations. Since I began working in Wenham, we found some issues with our zoning bylaws versus our rules and regulations for subdivisions, general bylaws, water resource protection bylaws. What our goal with this is to get all of our regulations looked at and see how they um, make sure that they're all cohesive and that they're all um, in sync with each other, as well as reflecting best practices and current best practices as they pertain to climate adaptation, um, especially for the MAPC grant. So we were fortunate to get this money. We've been trying for several years to get funding for this kind of project. Um, I will be managing the, these um, grants and we're going out to bid hopefully in another week or two. Um, the regulations that we're looking at updating are the rules and regulations governing the subdivision of land, which were last updated in 1984. Our zoning bylaws, our general bylaws, the water resource protection bylaws, and the stormwater management bylaws. All of these um, bylaws and regulations, um, there is some pertinence to mass general law for all of these. And we just wanna make sure that we're adhering to mass general law and that we're reflecting best practices at this point. This process will take at least a year. Uh, we imagine throughout this year we'll be utilizing the services of a consultant and um, we'll have lots of public meetings and we'll look for a lot of input from the public. So I'm glad there's so many people here tonight so that they are aware that we're gonna be reaching out to them looking for um, input. Also where the planning board is preparing for a master plan public information session. At their the recent um, budget meeting, there is a line item in the budget asking for funding for a master plan this year. It's been asked for for a, a few years and it hasn't gotten a lot of traction. I, I know we've been in difficult situations financially in Wenham. So we felt this year we might have an opportunity with it. And we, it seems like we got some decent feedback. We didn't feel like we got shot down immediately. Um, so we're planning a public information session to get support, to let the public know what a master plan is about, how it can benefit Wenham and what the, the steps are in order to um, have the master plan come to fruition. We're looking at um, February 25th for that meeting. Uh, Ann Weeks, our planning board chairman will be facilitating that for the most part. And we're hoping to have some a guest speaker come to that meeting just to give the, the public as much information as we can. Um, the, the planning boards also has some, it doesn't have a lot of applications in front of it right now. There's still a 60 Arbor Street definitive subdivision application that they're working on. Uh, but through the planning board, we're also monitoring um, Wedham Pines and the Spring Hill subdivision. The Zoning Board of Appeals um, recently had an uptick in applications. We've um, got three applications just in the past couple days, two for accessory apartments, which really seems to be a trend. We've had a lot of applications for accessory apartments in Wenham. Um, and then there's one on Eaton Road for variance for a small addition. 
We also heard back from 253 Larch Row, the bed and breakfast um, that has had been in litigation for a couple of years now. Um, the litigation is ending and we have been contacted by the owners and they'd like to start to look at that process again and possibly get to the point where they can open the bed and breakfast there. So we'll keep the public updated. The Zoning Board of Appeals will probably be the next committee that has to discuss that. So um, the Conservation Commission, this was Missy's board and I have taken over. When I first started in Wenham, I was managing the Conservation Commission as well as the other boards. Um, and then when we split off, Missy took over conservation and she did a great job. She was wonderful. Um, she didn't mind going out in the woods <laughs> in the snow and uh, through the mosquitoes. Um, so right now the Conservation Commission is processing through orders of conditions and certificate of compliances for various properties. We're overseeing the storm, Spring Hill subdivision had a lot of stormwater issues over the past year. So the Conservation Commission is monitoring that. Um, the fruit project has a fruit tree project that we're looking at. We're kind of working with them to see what um, fruit trees could be planted. And we just got a request from the Gordon College. They had a, a project for solar panels uh, on a tennis court right off of right near 128. Um, and the, they had gotten permitted through the Conservation Commission, but they've never done anything with it. So we just heard from them the other day that they want to extend their order of conditions and they're hoping to get that project started over the next year. So um, Open Space and Recreation Committee, we also, well, I also um, have been attending their meetings. We, they recently submitted an application to the Community Preservation Committee to, to do a feasibility study for the West Wenham Higginson Park playground area. Um, so we've, we helped manage that process. Um, we just heard from the Audubon that they're, they want to update their Cedar Pond Sanctuary property. They have a, a parking area off of Cherry Street and they want to upgrade the parking lot and they want to do um, an all person trail through that property and update some of the other trails. So I think we'll look forward to working with Audubon on that project as it moves forward. Um, and we're also working with um, CAI to update our town maps. But Missy did a great job getting the trail maps done. So now we're just working to get those put up on the town's website. Uh, and the Affordable Housing Trust. So I've also been working more closely with the Affordable Housing Trust, which I, I really like working with this committee. Um, they they also submitted an application to the Community Preservation Committee for funds to help um, support their projects that, as they're moving forward. Um, they recently purchased 2B Stockwell Lane, or Stockwell Road. It was an affordable unit um, that was owner occupied. The owners decided to sell and the town has the first right of refusal when any of these affordable units goes up on the market. So the Affordable Housing Trust decided to purchase this and turn it into a, a rental. So that was one of the action items in their action plan to create some affordable rentals for families. It's a it's a lovely little unit um, and I, Harbor Light will be managing that. It's similar to the um, Friend Court project. There is a condominium on Friend Court that the Affordable Housing Trust owns that they rent out. It's very successful. Um, so we're hoping that that will be rented out within a couple of months. Um, they're also working to get some new programs to facilitate their affordable housing goals. Uh, we'll be working, I have some emails out to uh, town council and other communities to see what kinds of programs their affordable housing trusts do that help to fund um, affordable housing in the community. Uh, you know, first time home buyer programs or possibly, um, you know, assistance for people who want to stay in their home but find it's, it's uh, unaffordable or whatever. So there's a lot of programs out there that we're looking at right now. We also monitor the affordable units that are in town currently. Um, as you all know, Maplewoods um, has gone through the permitting process. We're still waiting for a couple of things to happen before those units can go on our SHI 
but I anticipate that should be happening shortly. Um, 83 Dodges Row that Tom mentioned earlier has been renovated and is ready to go to the lottery. That's gonna be a, a home ownership unit, which will be great. Habitat for Humanity has two units on at 40 Hull Street. They're still working on those, but they are moving along. Um, Wenham Pines has two affordable units in that farmhouse at the front, and they have started renovating that. So we anticipate, you know, middle of this year, we should have some more word on when those will be ready to go out to the mar to market. Um, there's one other lot on the Spring Hill subdivision. It's lot 17A. And I've heard that they'll be transferring that lot to Habitat for Humanity to create maybe, maybe two more units on there, but we'll keep everyone posted on that. Um, so that's about it in our de my department. <laughs> I see our the royal we. Um, so there, you know, we're trying to keep things, all the balls in the air and keep things moving forward. Um, and if anyone has questions, everyone I think knows where to reach me by email, I'm always available. Thank you, Margaret. And you, uh, just like many other uh, employees in the uh, town hall, Margaret has, as you saw, a very wide ranging uh, menu of, uh, of projects and activities and committees that she handles. Thank you, Margaret. Thank that, you. Okay. All right, uh, next and perhaps uh, most importantly tonight, uh, Mary Beth Ting, I believe is uh, ready to talk about uh, COVID and the fact that we are soon uh, approaching the point where we'll, we have uh, vaccinations coming to town. So uh, please pay attention to this information. Please spread it to other uh, citizens and residents in town so that we can really uh, get this town uh, safe from COVID hopefully very soon. Mary Beth, are you on? I am, thank All you right. very much, Mr. Over Chairman. You. Yes. Thank you so much. So um, as you can see on the slide, the first thing we usually talk about is the current case count. So in Wenham, um, from the beginning of the pandemic until now, we have logged 270 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and additional 13 probable cases. Um, currently, we're dealing with 12 active cases, which means we've had a, a good number of people recover, which is wonderful news for us. Um, testing update. We will be offering testing together with Hamilton, uh, courtesy of Beauport. Um, at Miles River Middle School tomorrow, the 27th from 8.30 to 3.30 p.m. And again on Saturday the 30th, also from 8.30 to 3.30 p.m. Uh, Hamilton and Wenham are meeting and discussing plans going forward for February and beyond testing. So as determinations are made about coordination for that, we will be pushing that information out. I would say for individuals who need to seek testing and it's not on Wednesday or Saturday, we still have a very vibrant stop the spread testing program throughout the state. And I would remind residents that the closest locations for us are in Salem and in Saugus and Revere and Lynn. And if you go to the link to the stop the spread testing sites is right up on our COVID-19 page on the town of Wenham website. Additionally, I would say, um, I'm very pleased that the local places as well, including things like CVS and the Urgent Cares and um, Leahy Danvers, other providers, they're starting to turn around results much more quickly than they had been. Now it's, you know, I, I've been seeing the results come in in 12 to 24 or 36 hours rather than um, earlier in the surge, it was more about five days that we were seeing results. So I would say if you can't get a test on this Wednesday or Saturday, because you find that you need to test, you've been notified that you're a close contact or you're having symptoms, you can give a call to your physician and ask where they would recommend that you go for care, as well as using the Stop the Spread test sites. Um, I do see a question in the chat that Jackie Bresnahan has already answered. So thank you very much, Jackie. So that's the testing update. Um, Jackie and I have been meeting with our area 3D emergency preparedness coordinator to really draft our plans for how to bring out vaccination locally. I will say that we do have links on our COVID-19 webpage of where to go to seek vaccination. The state has an interactive map 
that is updated each Tuesday and Thursday with local sites. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard that there's going to be stood up the um, mass vaccination site at the Doubletree Hotel in Danvers. Um, we're working, I'm gonna let Jackie speak on our local efforts, but um, we are currently vaccinating anyone in phase one and next week we'll begin the vaccination for um, individuals in phase two. And the first priority group in phase two is individuals 75 and older. So Jackie, I'm gonna turn it to you for more further details. Thanks, Mary Beth. Um, so for our local vaccine distribution update, as Mary Beth said, there are a lot of sites around the North Shore. Um, and as we move into phase two, folks are gonna be eligible to book appointments at those sites. I will say that it's important that you do work to book your appointment at those sites. They will not take walk-ins at a majority of the sites. Um, for local sites, we are working on an outdoor drive-through site at Pingree Park. And we are also working with the towns of Topsfield and Hamilton at an indoor regional site at the Topsfield Fairground. So many of our first responders were able to get their vaccine there and we're gonna to continue to work regionally. Uh, but for many seniors or other residents who have indicated that they do not wanna to drive to Topsfield or uh, go inside to an indoor site, we're gonna have an outdoor drive-through option available the way we did for flu at the Bucher in the fall. Uh, but based on the volume and the wait time um, for monitoring and observation after you receive your shot, we're gonna utilize Pingree Park and we will have a map available on our website. Um, we'll be beginning in February as we go into phase two and the initial priority groups of phase two. Right now we're working on Wednesdays and Saturdays at Pingree Park. Uh, tomorrow, we're doing our first admin volunteer training. Um, it's very important that everything that we do when it comes to COVID vaccine is well documented because there are two shots needed. So we will be working to dose people for their first and their second dose. Uh, but we are still looking for admin volunteers and folks interested in vaccinating. And my email is up on the screen. Um, when it comes to signing up for your shot, the first piece of advice we're giving all residents at this point in time is to sign up for code red emergency notifications. And Nikki did a nice job and she put in the link on this PDF and there's lots of info on our website as well. Or you can call staff at the town hall or COA to sign help sign you up for code red. If you are thinking that you are signed up for code red, but you are not sure, tomorrow Nikki Roebuck and I will be doing a test run of the robocall system so that we have added a lot of seniors and other residents with not as much web technology in recent days. So we are gonna be doing a test robocall tomorrow. So if you have a friend or a loved one or a neighbor who you think needs this information and you know they might not have technology, do check in with them and let them know if you can that we're gonna be doing this robocall and see if they receive it because that's how we're gonna be making all of our vaccine announcements as we move through the different priority groups of the upcoming phase two. Um, and I do see that there's a question in the chat about what are we looking for for volunteers. We are right now looking at Wednesdays and Saturdays, four hour shifts, the times are still TBD, but we are looking for, it'll be three hour shifts of vaccine, vaccinating or admin work with a quick training and a setup time and a quick cleanup time at the end. So it's a four hour shift. Um, and folks can email me if they're interested in either of those and we'll start training folks and getting them on the schedule. If you're very interested in being an admin volunteer, we're running our first training via Zoom tomorrow at 11 a.m. So if you can email me tonight or first thing tomorrow morning, we can include you in that training. Uh, so what is the vaccine registration process going to look like for Wenham residents? So when we receive vaccine for phase two, we will start sending robocalls to indicate who is eligible for those appointments. We wanna make sure that especially in this first part of phase two, we do have a lot of residents in that 75 plus category who are not utilizing web and other technology to get their information. So I apologize in advance if you're not a fan of robocalls, but we do have a, a population of folks who really need them for their information accessibility. So if you are not interested in getting robocalls about vaccine, now is your time, your fair warning to unsign up for our robocalls for now and then when we're through the vaccine process, uh, sign back up. But we will be utilizing the robocall tool um, so that we can ensure that all of our residents who most need vaccine can get it. 
In the robocall for the phase eligibility, we will also include the phone number. Our, the Council on Aging will be serving as our call center. So if folks need help booking an appointment, they will call the COA. And thank you to Jim Reynolds and Jen Flynn and the other folks at the COA for serving in that capacity. Um, because of the nature of tracking the COVID when it comes, the COVID vaccine, excuse me, when it comes to the symptoms from potentially the vaccine and for booking the second appointment, all appointments need to be booked in our online system. So our COA staff will be standing by to book those appointments with residents who would like to book by telephone to ensure that everyone is able to book. And they will also be assisting with booking for the Topsfield Fairgrounds regional site, as well as the other sites in the area. They'll have access to all the different site data as we receive it so that folks can have pick and choose what they wanna do and work with the COA to get the, the dosage that they need. Um, your appointment will be scheduled and confirmed, and then you'll receive either an email or a phone call when it's time to book the second appointment. So we will work with the COA. So if you've already received the vaccine from another source, you may know that you're going to get an email with a link to sign up for your second dose. And we're going to work with the Council on Aging to do phone calls when it's time to schedule the second dose for our residents who don't utilize technology. Um, the thing that's, I think, the most important that Mary Beth and I want to communicate, we've ordered vaccine. Um, but Mary Beth's on all the public health calls and I'm on many of them too. We're going to have some ebbs and flows of, as we start to receive supply. There are caps to how much local boards of health can order and there are caps to how much all the sites can order. So I, something I wanna clarify for folks interested in receiving the vaccine and for volunteering is that this is gonna be a marathon and not a sprint. So we're looking for as much help as we can because once we start vaccinating, we won't stop until we're through all of the eligible phases and priority groups, but this is going to be a several months process. And while we're going to try to get everybody as quickly as we can, we can only take appointments for the vaccine that we are receiving. So if you don't hear from us or you don't get booked in the first few days, know that we're always going to be ordering and continuing to order more vaccine and we'll be working on getting everyone the appointment that they need, especially if they're uncomfortable going inside somewhere, they prefer the drive-through, or if they are willing to go outside of Wenham and go to an indoor facility, we'll get folks booked as soon as we can. Um, so a couple quick important takeaways for those, um, if you're gonna be chatting with your friends and neighbors, the vaccine supply will be slow to start. We're gonna book people as quickly as we can. A robocall will announce when appointments are available for different priority groups within the next phase, phase two. Residents can book online via the link or through the COA call center. And again, once we start, this is gonna be a really slow and steady process throughout the spring. And if you're interested in signing up for the robocall, please do so tonight or first thing tomorrow so that you can be included in our robocall test tomorrow to ensure that you're getting the information that you need. Um, I've gone over a lot. Um, I don't know if Mr. Chairman, you or anyone else has any questions about our current vaccine strategy. No, I think the important uh, takeaway for the uh, residents of the town, as you say, this is going to be a quite a long process that we will get to everybody. And I hope we can all cooperate, you know, get the information out to your loved ones, to your neighbors. And as Jackie said, you know, we have volunteers now, but as this is going to be a long project, Let's uh, give Jackie a call. And if you can't volunteer today, let's see if you can uh, sign up for next month or the month after that so that we can relieve the pressure on those that are starting this off. Over to Mary Beth, do you have any uh, concluding items in this area of COVID? I, I truly don't. I just am so grateful for the cooperation of the residents of Wenham. It's very difficult, as I've said before, when we're calling someone to discuss their infection status, that we're asking them to isolate at home or quarantine at home. We are here to help you. We so appreciate your cooperation. And I would just ask us all to continue to do use all the mitigation strategies. Wash your hands frequently. Don't touch your face. Stay home if you're not feeling well. If you're going to be gathering with those outside of your household, keep it at distance. Keep it outside if at all possible. So we do thank you very much. Be sure to socially connect with others while, be, while being physically distant because we all need that for our mental health. And please do reach out to the Board of Health if there's any way that we can be of assistance to you. Thank you, Mary Beth and uh, Jackie. A super job and uh, a long uh, job ahead of us. And uh, Mary Beth, we have a uh, 
Board of Health meeting coming up this week too that will uh, further address or perhaps get more information. Is that correct? That's correct. It's a joint Board of Health meeting with the Hamilton Board of Health on Thursday, the, I believe that's the 28th at 5 p.m. via Zoom. And that link is available on the town webpage. All right, thank you. So very important information there and uh, let's all cooperate and uh, we'll beat this thing over the next few months, hopefully. All right. Next up is uh, is uh, Ms. Goldberg online. I am here, sir. All right, thank you. So uh, tonight I'd like to address uh, some outstanding uh, open meeting complaints filed by Mr. Waddell as uh, follows. So uh, format wise, Lauren, do you want to, uh, I'll read the complaint and uh, you want to address the proposed uh, response or how it's best to work this with you? Um, uh, Mr. Chair, point of order point of order, you are missing the November 20th OML complaints. Yeah, so, so that slide appears uh, should be uh, November 20, not to December 20. So um, yeah, so uh, this discussion will be uh, just uh, between uh, Ms. Goldberg and myself as this informational session, not a proper uh, board meeting. All right, so uh, Ms. Lauren, what the... So the Sorry, we're mm -hmm. stepping on each other. Go ahead. I was going to say, Mr. Chair, if you'd like, I can um, say the date of the alleged violation, the um, allegations that have been ma made and kind of give a quick overview of what the law or how the law applies. And then um, my suggestion would be that I write these up as formal responses um, and give them to you for your next um, information session or meeting so that you can um, finalize them and we can send them off to the Attorney General and to Mr. Waddell. All right, thank you. And uh, along that line, the procedural way is as this is end up an informational meeting, not a proper board selecting meeting during the quorum problems that will be uh, solved by uh, next week, which I'll put this back in the agenda so that we'll uh, clearly have a solitary uh, selectman that can uh, go ahead with this process. So over to you, Lauren, I believe uh, the uh, you can address the those that you want to address tonight. Thank you. Certainly, Mr. Chair. Um, so, uh, Mr. Waddell has made a number of complaints, and since um, November twentieth, I know he's here and listening. Um, and you know, I'm, I am just paraphrasing, so I don't want anyone to think that the final response will not be uh, thorough and complete. Um, the Complaint for the for November 20th was that the select board entered into executive session without for, first allowing access to the public through the meeting link on the agenda. Um, I understand that uh, the meeting link was in fact incorrect, um, that it was uh, noted after the meeting, but there was concern that um, you know the public be allowed to uh, attend the, the open portion of the meeting where the board voted to go into executive session. Um, it, as I understand it, the actual phone number that was listed on the, um, on the meeting notice was uh, able to um, connect to town hall and people, at least one other person was able to get the correct information and, um, and call in. Nevertheless, obviously making sure that the uh, agenda is up to date with the current um, link is something that's very important and the town um, will be, you know, looking to kind of formalize some of the, um, some of the uh, steps that we can take to ensure um, that there aren't any occasional issues with, with a meeting notice. Um, the uh, Next complaint that was, uh, Mr. Chair, do you have any questions? No, on that one, no. It's quite okay. straightforward. Okay. Um, the next one is a um, complaint about the manner in which the select board uh, notified the public as to the candidates that would be interviewed or that were, that were selected essentially as finalists to proceed um, to consideration by the select board. Um, my understanding is that there were three people who were under consideration. Uh, one of those people um, uh, dropped out of the process before, um, before any interviews were held. Um, I think one of the concerns um, that Mr. Waddell has raised is that uh, the board held individual, individual board members, held individual meetings with the applicants. 
Um, and there was a concern that there wasn't uh, public interviews. Um, so I, I guess the, the way that I would look at this is what the board would not have been able to do, Mr. Chair, is to all with a quorum, sit down with each candidate in private. That would have required a, a meeting notice and a, a, you know, the opportunity for the public to listen. But there, it, it, meeting separately did not necessarily create that violation of the law. Um, to the extent that the board deliberated at the properly posted meeting um, about who to appoint and that appointment, that discussion was not long, whether because of Tom's, you know, shining qualifications or otherwise, um, you know, there's no requirement that there be a significant deliberation. And certainly um, under the open meeting law, and just to reiterate, Mr. Chair, there is no requirement that the public be allowed to participate at all. What the public's allowed to do is to attend and to listen. Um, any further interaction by the public or frankly, even by other members of the board are subject to the chair's, um, the chair's uh, discretion. Um, chapter 30, not, I'm sorry, chapter 30A, section 20, and I believe it's G, um, demonstrates the kind of scope of authority of the chair. Um, finally, the concern for this one was that the meeting notice wasn't updated to reflect the names of the, um, uh, or actually there's two more things, the names of the two finalists to be considered um, in fact, that uh, Mr. Waddell recognizes it was um, updated about three and a half hours before uh, the board's meeting. Um, you know, whether it could have been done, could have been done earlier really depends on whether um, the chair uh, was considering bringing everyone forward or, or was going to just decide that in his discretion, he wasn't interested in, in having all of the candidates come forward. So from my perspective, I don't see that there's a violation However, I do think um, that the concerns that we're hearing are all kind of one of a theme, which is transparency, notice, uh, information. And so certainly having a, um, a review of the, the, the requirements for updating a meeting notice and what that might look like in practical reality is, is always a good thing. Um, the other thing that um, I was gonna say, I think there's one more. Um, there was another um, portion of the complaint where it was um, suggested that the board had uh, indicated it was going to resolve by email the final contract for the interim town administrator. Um, my understanding is that the uh, then town administrator pointed out that um, that really had to happen at a meeting and that, that the, the contract was therefore at addressed at a meeting. I think it was on November 24th, if I remember correctly, um, pursuant to a properly posted um, notice. So it is correct that that board members are not um, generally uh, encouraged to communicate other than uh, by email other than with respect to scheduling um, if it's a matter within the board's jurisdiction. But here, although there had been a discussion about that, it never happened. So um, again, I think um, you know, we're kind of moving forward and, and all learning together about kind of the intricacies of this law, especially um, during a, uh, what could be, I, I don't know, characterized as a tumultuous time, both for the town and for the state. Um, and so I think we are uh, on, a good, on a good path forward. Um, there were two complaints that were filed that essentially said the board didn't react, didn't respond timely to my complaint. And um, you know, I think I, uh, I've talked to, to you, Mr. Chair, about how, um, and, and or I should say you've told me, you, you're interested in creating kind of a spreadsheet or formalizing the response, uh, the process for responding to open meeting law um, complaints. And it is a little tricky because it requires counting out 14, sorry, 14 business days and, um, and ensuring that the board meets during that time period. So kind of going forward when there's a full board once again, um, it will be good to, to have a protocol for that and maybe even a one page checklist would assist with keeping everything on track. Um, I don't have the December 18th and I apologize complaint in front of me. Um, I do have uh, a complaint that was filed, I believe on 112 with respect to a, um, a uh, process of appointment of members of the CPC that occurred um, some time ago in August. And, um, 
you know, even, even if this was a, a timely um, objection, um, the complaint essentially says that all the members of the Community Preservation Committee were not appointed at the same meeting. And so that kind of gave an advantage to one or the other. Um, and further that it, um, that all the, anyone who had submitted a notice of interest had to be brought forward and uh, their qualifications discussed at a meeting. And again, I kind of go back to the broad discretion that the chair has both with respect to what the, um, to what the, the agenda for a meeting looks like and also with respect to the manner in which the chair decides to, um, to review appointments or possible appointments. So I don't think this was uh, a violation of the open meeting law to consider appointments at two different meetings. Um, and I also think um, that this is likely too late uh, to, to be valid under the law. Nevertheless, um, again, I think, you know, there's a theme here of kind of um, organizing or, 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 or uh, formalizing the process for responding to open meeting law requests. And I think having this conversation is obviously getting us a long way towards that. And I, um, you know, I would intend to write up responses to each of these complaints in a single consolidated response. Um, and uh, Mr. Waddell, I know has asked uh, that the, the, that the board commit to doing some training. I don't mean just, um, just this board, but I will just point out that um, the last time we did training was when Peter Lombardi was here. And so it, you know, there's, there's always opportunity for that and whether it's Zoom or otherwise, you know, I am of course willing to, um, to provide that. And just to remind you, and I don't know if we've ever had this conversation that those kinds of trainings are, are provided at no cost. So, um, you know, having it won't, won't incur any additional costs for the town. Thank you, Lauren. So already the, uh, Board of Selectmen, uh, with the assistance of the town administrator and the executive assistant, will be uh, and have started the process of updating the committee and board member handbooks to include a uh, process uh, put in there so that any committee member, uh, any committee chairman can go to the handbook and uh, have a checklist rather than just a descriptive idea there of what to do here. Furthermore, the uh, clerk of the uh, Board of Selectmen has established a uh, spreadsheet to uh, track these uh, um, OML complaints so that we can uh, respond in a timely manner. Uh, lastly, I'd say that yes, so uh, the uh, chair has been remiss in addressing these in a timely fashion, but uh, uh, we must admit that uh, there's been a lot of other outstanding uh, activities going on resolving, revolving around the Board of Selectmen status and so forth. So for Mr. Waddell, uh, we made the commitment here that uh, we have a, uh, changes coming on the uh, Board of Selectmen that uh, were necessary, we're putting in place the necessary administrative uh, processes. And uh, going forward uh, next week when we will have, in one way or another, a, a formal, uh, uh, not quorum, but we'll have a legitimate uh, uh, position that we can respond, we'll uh, do so on uh, all these complaints. So that closes that out for the evening. And uh, I wanna say a special thanks, uh, as you saw tonight, the uh, uh, Jackie and Mary Beth have uh, really uh, done extra effort and all of the members on their team to address the COVID situation and uh, hope everyone uh, gets involved volunteer wise or just making your own appointments to get that uh, COVID vaccine. Secondly, uh, going ahead, I said that there is a uh, executive session meeting this Thursday at 3.30 that will uh, hopefully uh, move closer to resolving uh, this large issue concerning the Board of Selectmen going forward. And uh, I will have further information uh, after that meeting perhaps, or uh, hopefully at least by next week at the uh, 6.30 follow on uh, Board of Selectmen session. So uh, thank you uh, to uh, Tom Younger and all the staff in the town hall. There's a lot of information tonight and I hope the public at large uh, picks up, especially on the COVID stuff, but also on the great work that Margaret and the other department heads are doing. And we'll pay attention to uh, all the work that the finance committee is doing leading up to our annual town meeting. Lastly, if there's any questions on the uh, special elections, on the uh, road to a uh, town uh, meeting coming up with the solitary uh, selectmen, 
and uh, give me an email at gcheesman at uh, 1mma.gov and or email uh, Tom Younger as the town administrator. Thank you very much. And uh, given the no quorum, I'll uh, just declare this uh, information session uh, closed and we'll uh, keep the public updated via the website, via public announcements in the interim, but uh, at least we'll be right back here next Tuesday at 6.30 to uh, give you an update on the Board of Selectmen status. Thank you very much and uh, good night.